Hi guys, so in this video I'm going to walk you through how to do the calculations of determining how much ATP can be generated by the beta oxidation in the citric acid cycle of metabolites from fatty acid metabolism. Um, in this example we're going to look at um, even chain fats first using 16O fatty acid or palmitate fatty acid. Then we're going to look at how much ATP is generated from odd chained fats using the example of 17O fatty acid as well as looking at what happens when you have unsaturated fats such as 16 one fatty acid. So what happens when there is a double bond in our fat? Now, if you really want to get the most out of this uh, little mini lecture, I would encourage you to get a piece of paper out and follow along with me in this calculation. Okay, so watching passively is somewhat helpful, but actually being engaged with the lecture and following along with the calculation would be helpful. So um, if you need, you can pause the video get you a piece of paper, get you a pencil, and a calculator, as well as get your textbook out so that you can follow along with me um, in the figures that we're using in the lecture. Okay, so the first thing we got to keep in mind is that we often have to spend ATP in order to make ATP. So just as we saw in glycolysis, we have to burn the two equivalents of ATP in order to activate our fatty acid for beta oxidation. So what we mean by activating is we need to attach this CoA to the fatty acid. And to do that, we're gonna take ATP and we're gonna fully um, dephosphorylate it in order to make AMP. And when we do that, we generate the energy by cleaving that phosphate bond, but um, pyrophosphate is also going to spontaneously degrade into two inorganic phosphates and that releases a lot of energy as well. All that energy released is going to be used in order to make our acyl-CoA. Alright, so remember even though you don't see two here, we are, we are burning the equivalent of two ATPs in order to make that AMP. So all fatty acids regardless if they're odd chained, even chained, or desaturated, will start out with a deficit of 2 ATP. So when we're done calculating, we need to remember to come back and subtract the 2 ATP that we burned in order to activate the fatty acid. The next step is to calculate how much ATP is derived from the beta oxidation of the acyl-CoA. So remember in beta oxidation we are cleaving two carbons off of the chain in each round in order to make acetyl-CoA. Now if you notice when we do that we also generate one molecule of FADH2 and one molecule of NADH for each cycle of beta oxidation. So the first thing you need to ask yourself is how many rounds of beta oxidation do we undergo for acyl chain degradation? So for even chained fats, it's pretty straightforward, straightforward formula. So the number of rounds of beta oxidation can be calculated by N divided by two minus one, where N is your number of carbons. So for example, with 16O fatty acid, we have 16 carbons. So our calculation will be 16 divided by two minus one equals seven rounds of beta oxidation. And remember, I already told you, for every round of beta oxidation, we will generate one molecule of NADH plus one molecule of FADH2. When we multiply that with how many rounds of beta oxidation our specific fat will undergo, 
for the 16O fatty acid, that's going to be seven molecules of NADH plus seven molecules of FADH2. Now remember, we also make seven molecules of acetyl-CoA, and eventually we are left with another molecule of acetyl-CoA at the end, okay? So total, we'll have eight molecules of acetyl-CoA that can go into the citric acid cycle. We'll look at how much ATP that generates in a minute. Let's go back to just beta oxidation. So if you recall from the electron transport chain, each molecule of NADH generates 2.5 molecules of ATP on average. So to figure out how much ATP total we get, we're gonna multiply that by our rounds of beta oxidation. So seven times two and a half. And remember, FADH2 generates 1.5 molecules of ATP. So in total, we can plug and chug 7 times 2.5 plus 7 times 1.5 is going to give us 28 molecules of ATP from beta oxidation. Okay? Now remember, we still have eight acetyl-CoA's to account for, and those acetyl-CoA's can go into the citric acid cycle. So how much ATP do we make from those acetyl-CoA's going into the citric acid cycle? So for every one acetyl-CoA, we generate one, two, three molecules of NADH, one molecule of FADH2, and one molecule of GTP, which can be converted directly to ATP. All right, so for 16O fatty acid, we get eight molecules of acetyl-CoA, right? Seven as products of beta oxidation, and then one left over after the seventh round of beta oxidation. So eight molecules of acetyl-CoA times the three NADH for every acetyl-CoA plus the one FADH2 plus the one molecule of GTP, right? So if we plug and chug that, that's going to give us 24 molecules of NADH plus 8 molecules of FADH2 and 8 molecules of GTP. Now when we account for the ATP, that's going to be 24 times 2.5 right? Because remember, every NADH molecule makes two and a half molecules of ATP plus eight times 1.5, right? To give us the FADH2 ATPs. And then remember, our GTP to ATP is a one-to-one, -one, so that's going to be eight times one, okay? Again, if we plug and chug, 24 times 2.5, is going to give us 60. 8 times 1.5 is going to give us 12 plus 8. When we combine all of that ATP, we have 60 plus 12 plus 8 gives us 80 molecules of ATP total from the citric acid cycle. Now that we've taken into account the ATP from the citric acid cycle, which is 80, plus the ATP that we got from beta oxidation, which in this case is, what was it, 28, we see that we, we make a total of 100 and eight molecules of ATP. Now that's how much ATP total we generate. 
It's not our net ATP. Remember we talked about at the very beginning, we gotta spend some ATP to make ATP. So for an even chain fat, we have to burn two equivalents of ATP at the beginning. So make sure you always subtract that two ATP that was burned at the beginning to get your total net yield, which is 106 molecules of ATP total made from a 16O fatty acid. Okay, now what happens if we have an odd chain fat? So for example, 17O fatty acid. A lot of it is the same, but there's a few key differences. So the first different or the first similarity is that we still activate, right? Just all fatty acids are going to get activated. So we're going to still have an activation penalty of 2 ATP. Okay. The next question is, how many rounds of beta oxidation do we have? Well, for 17O fatty acid, it's still going to be seven rounds of beta oxidation. The reason is, is to calculate the rounds of beta oxidation for an odd chain fat, it's going to be the N minus 1 divided by 2 minus 1. So for 17O fatty acid, that's going to be 17 minus 1 is 16, divided by 2 is 8, minus 1 is 7. Okay, so we're still going to have 7 rounds of beta oxidation, which give us 1 molecule of NADH plus 1 molecule of FADH2 for every round of beta oxidation. Okay, the other key difference is, though, at the end of that beta oxidation, you're going to end up with the seven acetyl-CoA's, right, which are products of each round of beta oxidation. But at the end of the last round, instead of having an eighth acetyl-CoA, two carbon long chain, you're going to have a three carbon long chain CoA called propenyl-CoA, okay? Now, propenyl-CoA can then be converted to succinyl-CoA. Now, it does cost us another molecule of ATP. So we got to remember, we're going to lose another molecule of ATP in order to convert that propenyl-CoA to succinyl-CoA. Okay? So now our deficit has gone from 2 ATP to 3 ATP, okay? Now, the 7 acetyl-CoA's can still go into the citric acid cycle just as we saw in the 16O fatty acid, but instead of having 8, we now have 7. So, it will be 7 times 3 NADH plus FADH2 plus GTP, okay? Then the succinyl-CoA, however, can also go into the citric acid cycle. So if you recall from the citric acid cycle, succinyl-CoA comes in here at about halfway down the citric acid cycle. So while we do bypass two NADHs, we still make one molecule of GTP, one molecule of FADH2, and one molecule of NADH. So for the succinyl-CoA, we have one succinyl-CoA that makes one molecule of GTP plus one molecule of FADH2 and one molecule of NADH. Okay, so then we can go in and plug and chug to calculate the odd chain fatty acid. So we have in total seven NADHs from beta oxidation plus 21 NADHs from the citric acid cycle from the acetyl CoA and then one additional NADH from succinyl-CoA going through the citric acid cycle. So that's going to give us a total of 29 NADHs 
let's total up our FADH2. We have 7 from beta oxidation. We have 7 from the acetyl-CoA's that went into the citric acid cycle. And we have 1 from the succinyl-CoA that went into the citric acid cycle. So that gives us 15 FADH2's total. And then for GTP, we have 7 from acetyl-CoA's going into the citric acid cycle and one from the succinyl-CoA going into the citric acid cycle. So that still gives us eight GTPs. All right, again, if we take in our ATP ratio, that's going to be 29 times 2.5 for the ATP generated by NADH, so that is 72.5 plus the FADH2 molecules, which is 1.5 times 15, and that gives us 22.5, and then our 8 GTP, which can go directly to ATP, gives us 8. Our subtotal then is 72.5 plus 22.5 plus 8. That gives us 103 molecules of ATP as our subtotal. And then remember, we had to burn two at the beginning to activate our CoA and burn one in order to convert propranyl CoA to succinyl CoA. And when we do that, we have to subtract three so our subtotal is 100, or our net total is 100 ATP. So if you notice, the 17O fatty acid that has one more carbon is only 100 ATP, where the 16O fatty acid, which has one less carbon, gives us 106. So we get actually a little more efficiency out of even chain fats than we do the odd chain fats. However, the yield's fairly close, okay? It's going to be six less ATP for the 16O fatty acid versus the 17O fatty acid. Again, that comes from a net loss of the two NADHs um, that succinyl-CoA loses out on and burning a molecule of ATP. All right, so now our next question is, what about unsaturated fatty acids? What happens when we have double bonds in our fatty acid chains? Well, the truth is, is that while we do have to burn um, energetic molecules, we actually use NADPH in the steps where we have to um, reduce those double bonds. We're not using NADH or FADH2. So the net yield doesn't change based on unsaturation. So the net yield is the same. Okay, the only thing that's going to have an impact on your net yield of ATP on the oxidation of these fats is going to be whether it's an even chain or an odd chain fat. All right, um, I really hope that this was helpful to you guys. Again, as always, feel free to email me or reach out to me or post on our Muddiest Discussion Point thread um, in order to um, address any questions that you guys may still have about this topic. All right, I will see y'all in class next time. Thank you.